stop. Hello everybody, welcome to my first live stream. I'm streaming on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Live here today. So if you get the opportunity and you want other people to watch me choke really bad, go down to that left side of your Facebook screen and hit share. And let's see who else we can get on board. Now um, this big screen to the right is supposed to be a screen that tells me who's online. But of course it's not working and I got to work through a lot of bugs. So I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me and working through this with me. So a few of the things that I've got going on here is uh, this, this format will be uh, doing uh, several types of things. Okay. And what I'm wanting to do is I want to talk about tournaments. I want to talk about kayak fishing specific things, uh, different lakes. I want to talk about gear and techniques. Um, uh, and I've, I've already lined up several really, really, really good people um, that are willing to come on the show and share their knowledge. And I'm hoping that we'll get that. I've got a few of them here. I'm going to show you who some of my featured people are. If you don't know who Jody Queen is, shame on you. We've got Brian Schiller, the podfather of the Paddle and Fin Network. Derek Burgos from Pure Florida Water Sports. Payne Outdoors with Chris, Chris Payne. And I've also got Henry Vagan come on board. I haven't set his up on here yet, but Henry's going to be on board with us too. So the big thing, the big news everybody's been watching today is the Kayak Bass Nation event down in Texas. And I have a special guest who's been down there this week. And uh, it's... But well, let's just bring him on the show. Are you there, my brother? I got you. All right. Let's, let's get you full screen here. All right. There we go, brother. So uh, what's going on down in Texas? Has it been crazy or what? Uh, weather's been a little crazy. It's definitely crazy hot. I'll tell you. I <laughs> promise you that. I got, uh, I got the old Irish tan going on. I'm red from head to toe. <laughs> so the, it's it's August down there for us, but uh, you're down there in June, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. You feel, yeah. Like, feel like your military days down there, huh? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It reminds me a lot of them. That's for sure. Well, tell us about your your uh, your experience down there, your time on the water, what you did pre fishing up to the event. Uh well, I got here Saturday evening. Or, well, actually, Saturday morning. <clears throat> we weren't allowed to be on the water Saturday. So I just drove. Any If a road led to the lake, I was trying to be on it. That way I could at least get eyes uh, eyes on the water. Um, first, thing it, first thing I noticed was everything I read, even on Possum Kingdom State Park website, all they talked about was bluest, clearest water in the southwest. It looked like chocolate milk everywhere from the time I showed up. So that was the first curveball that got thrown to everyone in the field. Where from they made it sound like Summersville. Like Summersville clear water. Right. It, it, well, you can't really, I can't show you on the phone from here, but it, it's chocolate milk. So that was the first curveball. Uh Sunday I went to just the state park, probably the most used boat ramp as far as anything goes, just trying to get on the water. Uh, I caught a, I caught a few fish, 
nothing that would have been able to score though. So I was kind of feeling a little bit down about that. And I found a little bit of clear water. And of course, the rest of the field knew where the clear water was. So come Monday for free fishing, that's where I went. And I, there was probably 50 guys there free fishing. But it was the best water on the lake. I caught a couple fish. Um, I really wasn't, I wasn't real confident in anything. Tuesday rolls around. Uh, I got on a little bit of a pattern, but nothing that uh, I thought was concrete. I knew the bottom could fall out of it any time. It felt more like I was junk fishing. I had, I pretty much had the fish pinned down where they were. I just couldn't pin down what they wanted. And then uh, yesterday, first yesterday was uh, first day of competition. Um, I went to my first spot, the best where I'd seen the most fish, graphed the most fish, caught the most fish, and uh, well, I, I I got ahead of myself. Everyone shows up first day, expecting like the decently clear green water. We show up, and all the muddy all the muddy water had made its way into there. Oh wow! So that was uh, that was the first thing. So I go to my first, I go to my main spot where I thought I was going to do the most of my damage. Uh, of course, it's I guess not blown out, but it's just muddy. So that's where honestly my struggles began. It took me probably three hours before I was able to start getting on to fish and to make adjustments. Which in a field this strong, some of the names in this field. I mean, you got to be on it, and there's no room for mistakes. So my first mistake was taking way too long to adjust. Uh, I did end up catching my first fish. It was a nice one. It was a 16. Um, I thought I knew what they were going to be on, so I just kept doing the same thing for the majority of the day. And I, I my second fish come about an hour later, and it was a 15 three quarter. So I knew if I if I was able to put a few more fish in the boat of that quality, that uh, by no means the size of the fish that some of the guys were catching, by no right. means would I been near the top, but I'd at least have a decent chance of cashing a halfway decent, at least paying for my, my gas money to get down here. Right. Uh, after that second fish, it seemed like my day just went downhill from there. Uh, I, so I couldn't keep fish pinned. I was chained. I, I was changing hooks thinking they were coming out of the pack stall, but no matter what I did, uh, it was coming off. And then uh, I made a where rookie did, mistake. What's where, did you fin where did you finish at after the first day? Uh, first day, I, was, I believe I was sitting in the 80s. That, I mean, that's middle of the pack, right? Yeah, there. Uh, I believe there's 150 guys, or right yeah. around 150. Well, that's not bad. How, how was your day today? My day today, actually, as far as losing fish, it went a lot better than what it did yesterday. The majority of the fish I caught, I uh, I landed, but um, I was not, I was only able to put a couple on the board. Uh, it just seemed like every by the time I made the adjustment adjustments that I needed to start make catching fish, it the I mean the day was over. So it uh, it was a learning experience. For sure. Well, are you going to make it up for the WVK tournament Saturday? Or are you going to go on home? No, I uh, I have to be there Saturday. My brother and teammate is starting our float, so someone has to be at the bottom of the float to pick him up. <laughs> so, well, I guess you're leaving in the morning then, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to leave here around two o'clock this morning in the morning and uh, make the haul up to Hinton and. Get back in my comfort zone. Be back in West Virginia where I know what the bass are doing. Well, I can tell you one thing. We'll look, enjoy and we'll be jealous to look at your nice tan. Well, uh, <laughs> I'll make sure I put my bikini on. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring the sunshine with you, man. It's been raining here the past couple of days. Oh, has it? Yeah. I had a chance to check the weather. That's something I was worried about. I was wondering what the river's going to look like. Uh, hopefully it's not too bad. I mean, but uh, it, I mean, there, there's been some gully washers in different areas, so you never know where the muddy water is going to be and where the clean water is going to be. So, 
But hey, I, I'm going to jump off here with you and bring on our next guest. God bless you, Ben. Thank you for being a part of the show. And also, thank you with you and your brother as Guggen Bros. It's just showing underneath you right now uh, for being a sponsor of this show. I appreciate you. I believe I lost him, so we're going to go to a commercial. We'll let you go, brother. You guys hang on tight here. I'm bringing on Philip Backus. Philip Backus is uh, standby when we can get him on video. There we go. You all can right, you see Phillip? me? I got you, Big Daddy. I cannot see you. You will here in a second, all right? Okay. All right. Philip, are you with us, Big Daddy? I am. I apologize in advance. I'm watching my two little girls. Oh, no. Ch no. Chasing them around all over the place. No worries, man. No worries. Guys, uh, people of our show, we're, we're streaming here live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Twitch. So we have one of the up-and-coming sticks with us here on the show. He's stormed the scene the last two years. He's done very well in... Uh, some KBF tournaments, but I like to think that he started and got his started his uh, got everything excited and got him all started with WVKA. Oh, so, it, it absolutely did. Hey, man! So tell us about what you did up in, uh, in Michigan last week. Well, me and Storm and Rick and uh, Bunny went up to St. Clair to fish the KBF trail events up there. We went up on. I think Wednesday, got there at like 11 o'clock, went fishing that evening. It was absolutely dumping the rain. Uh, we fished on the west side of the lake every day. There was other spots we wanted to try, but we wanted to focus our attention on one spot. And St. Clair is just an amazing fishery. That was the first time I'd ever been there. I've heard how great it is, and it lives up to the hype. We caught so many fish. And a lot of big fish in pre fishing. What was the water uh, like? Conditions. Huh? What was the water like? I mean, comparable to what we have here, is it? Well, is it? You think you think the water's clear on Summersville and you know some of these other lakes we got around here? But that water up there is is gin clear. Like we were offshore probably three quarters of a mile fishing. <laughs> And it's only like 13, 14 feet deep, but you can see straight to the bottom like it's one foot deep. It was incredible how clear it was. You could sight fish for a smallmouth on beds in 12 to 14 feet of water. It was oh, amazing. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So what 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 did you uh, end up with down there, up there? Was that a one-day or two-day event? No, it was two one-days. The first day, the first tournament was Saturday, and we, we had them figured out pretty good pre-fishing. We were on some big fish offshore, but... Uh, the wind was so bad on the first day of the tournament that we that we tried to go out there, but it was. Well, it looks like uh, we may have lost you here. Um, Grashed in a roll, but uh, we struggled the first day to catch to catch a big fish. Caught a lot of fish, just 
just not the size that we found on the uh, the second day of the tournament. I got you. Awesome. Well, so first day you struggled, but the second day you guys put the hammer down, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, the second day we rebounded. We, I mean, we caught some nice fish. We caught big fish. We caught a bunch of 19s, 17s. Uh, I think Storm was on some, got on some 18s, and it was all from really the same, I don't know, quarter mile square area. We we were we were bed fishing. Uh, but yeah, but unless you can find 20 inch over 20 inch fish up there you don't you don't stand a chance the guys right. that won had, the guys that won had over 100 inches both days the guy actually won both days he won big bass and first place both days had like 101 and a half 102 we were on we were on 19 inch fish they were on 20 21s we just we just couldn't hang with them we didn't have time to find the big ones but uh i mean we still did good he got 11 storm got 11th i got a uh, 14th i think i had 90 92 and three quarter, which will win or be top five in most tournaments anywhere Definitely. in the country. And, he, right. and he, had 90, he had 93 and three and quarter, and we, we weren't even in the top 10. It was incredible the fish that were being caught up there. That sounds like a hell of a day. Oh, it was, so, I can't. I want, to go, I want to go back. I know the, there were some other guys from the club went. Steve Gunner, Brandon Honaker, Mike Watkins, uh, Brian Wood, they went up. Honaker. Honaker did good on the first day. He caught, I think, upper 80s and got a yeah. top 15 out of it. They were on some good fish, too. It's, it's just an amazing history. There's, there's, the largemouth up there is underrated, too. You can go in the, the canals and the seawalls and catch, I mean, 60, 70 largemouth in a day if you want. Most of them are small, but but it's underrated The largemouth is up there. It's It's amazing. Well, uh, are we going to see you this weekend down on the New River? You will. See. It'll be the New or the Greenbrier. I'm going to wait to see what this rain's going to do this evening, see if it's going to blow anything out. I'm hoping it don't, but I'll be fishing somewhere. Well, do I have an idea where you're going to be fishing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might. <laughs> uh, I I'll, got you. I'll, uh, I'll, be, I'll be checking it on the way home from work. <laughs> I, will, I'll sh- I won't say nothing. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, I look forward to seeing you this weekend. Uh, sit down and chat a little bit more. All Thank right, man. You. Thanks, John. Appreciate you coming on the show. I'm going to jump. Oh, no problem. No we'll problem. Go. Meantime. Thank you, man. All right. We're going to go on break here, and I'm going to bring on a buddy of mine from Florida. So stand by. Don't go away. Grab you a drink. We'll be right back. Hey, buddy. Go landscape on your phone, baby. Oh. Alright, so I'm back here and I'm getting ready to load up a good friend of mine. Uh, I make a trip down to see him yearly and then we load up after doing a few days of fishing and we hit ICAST. And uh, ICAST is going to be a blast this year. I'm looking forward to it. So let's bring on my good buddy and very good friend, Derek Burgos. What's oh up? man! How you hey, doing, man. buddy? What's going on, Derek? Let me get you full screen here, man. I must I messed up with my Discord, so I got to get on my Discord here and make no you full screen, baby. They got to be able to see your pretty face. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, yeah. See all the whites, 
popping out of my chin now. And <laughs> they say be, have, being a business owner is easy, right? It's fun, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So, I mean, since we've known each other the last six years, you know, we, we are on the field free fishing team together. We're like the old guard of the, I mean, of the, since 2014, uh, we, there's like 67 of us on the team now, pro staff. And I think we're probably of the original five that are left um, from that group. Yeah. Uh, not very many of us left, but we, we've hung tight. And your love for Feel Free Kayaks uh, went from working at a shop near in downtown Florida, downtown Tampa area, to now owning your own shop, Pure Florida Water Sports. You've been doing it for now a little over three years, right? Yeah, Pure Florida Water Sports is uh, over three. We're, yeah, almost going to hit the four-year mark. It's crazy. So, crazy. Time's flying, man. Time's and, flying. So, And proud of you what the work that you and Natalie are putting in down there because you go from year one to year four, and year one you guys were the top-selling uh, boat area in Tampa, and now you own Florida. Uh, I mean, pure Florida. <laughs> that's water a big sports. title, but man, you, man, yeah, you, know, a, you, you, you know it. So tell us what's going on. I know you're, you're it's doing some a big stuff time. Well, it, it's a lot going on. I mean, uh, I never thought I'd be selling kayaks, you know, as a living. You know, I went from, you know, I was an electrician for many years and I turned into a kayak fishing guide. And I was one of the first kayak fishing guides in the state. And, you know, I love it. I still do it. I still guide. And, um, you know, just years later, man, I don't know. I just, it, it turned my passion, my direction changed, you know, and it went from like, let's get, you know, you know, I was a big tournament angler and getting people on the water and stuff like that, but it turned into like, let's teach people. So, you know, I started teaching a lot more people out there, man. It's just, it's changing and getting them on the water, getting them the right boat. We do different stuff, man. You know that, John, you watch us all the time. Um, we're the shop that you can come to and get real true um uh information from you know we're we're gonna tell you the truth you know if something's good something's not good so uh you know just a little bit different so we turned everything our direction and i got tired of hearing the story of like oh i went to this kayak shop and the guy just tried to sell me on a boat that's been there a long time or i went to that kayak shop and you know no one had any information for me so i was like you know maybe we can do something a little different you know and better definitely I mean, well, we're, we're trying. Obviously, I mean, so are you still looking at expanding your store or what? Yeah, we are. Um, and I'll tell you, it's uh, it's harder than like, you know, looking for a new home. Um, our problem in our area is there's really not much available. Um, there's a lot of new construction going on. And, uh, you know, it just may have to change. We may have to change gears and our move is maybe a little longer than anticipated but uh we're still looking every day it's just been really tough man it, it is uh and of course with the inflation and everything that's going on in the world today this new world we live in uh the rates are just ridiculous you know property and everything else so but it's coming man it really is coming uh <laughs> we need it we need it bad yeah definitely so you talked about guiding. Are you still doing a lot of that? I, I mean, I, I've been fishing yeah. with you. I've been out oh, on your yeah, trips. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, w I was on trips this week. I got to catch up with some photos. But I was on some trips this week. This morning I was out there. Uh, it's been really good. It's hot. We're in Florida. It's getting uh, it's getting hot again. We're in June. Um, one thing we're missing is the rain. Rain has always been important. I think I've told you in the past. Yeah. Uh, one of my – one of my favorite, which you know, uh, fish is a juvenile tarpon. I love tarpon, but juveniles, there's something about them. Being in a peaceful, quiet back country and all of a sudden just this big explosion. You know, it's just something about that. But, um, you know, we can, ta we can catch tarpon year round. But this is the time of year where, you know, the rains are real important because it'll kind of push them together, get them out towards the the uh, mouth of the rivers and get right. them out to the bay. Yeah, where there's just so many of them and they have to roll because – <clears throat> the water gets so uh, so tannic and you know full of that rain and gets so fresh that they start rolling more. So it makes it an easy target. You know what I yeah. mean? So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we just uh, we don't have we don't have that as much uh, quite yet. We're waiting for this rain. I know you guys up that way. Well, not so much you, but I know 
Phil Free and them, those guys in Carolinas are getting all that rain. We need some of that down here, man. Yeah, we we really look, do. We've got a little bit the past couple days, and when it's doing uh -huh. up here, it's it's hitting us in pockets, hard downpours yeah. and little pockets. So when we do our tournament here this Saturday, it's going to be interesting to find clean water on the new river because uh, there's going to be a lot of different areas flooding, um, or yeah. even yeah. even the Greenbrier. So, but yeah, yeah. Um, so a lot of the folks are going to see you a lot on our show here because you're one of my yeah. experts. You're going to be talking about <laughs> different items and uh, different boats. I mean, you sell the Johnny boat, the Phil Freeze. The three waters, you've got uh, the sea streams, and I mean a lot of product we can go over. Plus, you you carry all the kayak fishing gear accessories that something new or something out of the blue that you want to tell us about that that selling hot down there in Florida. We would love to hear about up here in West Virginia. So keep stuff like oh, that in mind, man. Yep, yep, we got you, man. We got you. Yeah, we can help you out with the uh, product of the week of the month. I can tell you right now. You wouldn't expect it, but right now the product of, I'll say, the last three months has been just cup holders. I don't yeah. know what it's been. I mean, we are going through cup holders like you wouldn't believe. I mean, people are buying cup holders before even any kind of rod holders. It's it's so funny. But wow. that's what's been happening. Yeah, it's like I don't, I don't understand it. I mean, we're having people come in like, I need three of them. I need four. <laughs> they don't care if it's, you know, Yak Attack, Rail Blazer, or, or, uh, Rail Blazer, or anybody. You know, they just want a cup holder. So I awesome. guess uh, you guys want to know right now what the number one accessory is. It's a cup holder. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, but, man. So but, next month, next month, I'm cruising yes, down. I'm cruising down. I don't know if I'm going to drive down or fly down. Right now, I'm, I'm planning on, the, my hope is to drive, loaded with a boat, so I can hit, come down and hit you, and we do our, our offshore trip, but our, has Danny Gann got us lined up with some of his monster largemouth yet? He's gonna, I know he's listening right now, he's got no choice, so he's gonna have to yeah. get us into uh, to his little neck of the woods, his little honey holes are sweet, yeah. wait till you get there, John. Yeah, well, So I'll he's got some nice, so we'll, I'm hoping we'll try to get... Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping he's hearing this because we're calling oh, yeah. him out, man. We're calling him out. That's right. And Danny, you're coming to the salt. We're gonna get you on some uh, some of our our uh, saltwater snook. We uh, our yeah. uh, snook with our saltwater bass on steroids, buddy. Yeah, we're gonna get you out there. So, <laughs> yeah, that snook I caught when I was with you there a couple years ago. That was a blast. I mean, that thing oh, just man, blew up. Your face was priceless, man. You know what I mean? It was great. And you, you had the beard back then, so we couldn't really see your face. But I saw it. I saw I'll, it, you know, creeping up behind there. You never know when I'll have the beard when I won't. So yeah. I, may have, <laughs> I may have it in a month. You never know. Hey, you never know. Things change, right? So Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll be uh, – we'll definitely we'll – get, we'll get together, man, and it'll be a good time to get some photos down or, you know. So yeah, I guess go, definitely. Photos and – Get some video, yeah. do, do some interviews, hit the hit the show. I'm looking forward to the Definitely. show, after, especially after yeah, it's a, been a COVID year. Yeah, yeah, it's been way too quiet, man. We need to we need to do something. You know, everybody does. It's been so quiet, you know. So my peeps that are watching this show, watch for Derek to throw up a link to his store. And if you're ever in the Tampa Bay, Florida area, stop by and see him. And uh, if you're looking for a fishing trip in the salt, he can probably hook you up there too. Um, oh yeah. Hey man, I appreciate you jumping on. I will catch up with you later, and we're gonna go to a quick commercial break, catch up, uh, and and then we're gonna close this off for today. I got. All right, I man. Got, thanks for having me, buddy. Yeah, man. I gotta go home, load up that kayak, get ready for that tournament. So. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, man. Right. Good luck with it. Uh, thanks, we'll brother. talk soon, buddy. Uh, all, right, all right, man. Bye bye. All right, guys, we're going to a commercial break.
All right, man, we're back. We're back. Going to wrap up this little show. You know, I wanted to go over the last few features that I'm hoping to do. What you just watched is one of the things I want to do. I want to talk to our guys from West Virginia um, and get their experiences um, and let people know who they are. You know, uh, these guys are traveling around the nation now. They started off with the West Virginia Kayak Anglers. You know, that's a club I started four years ago, and now Greg Kuffner is taking it over. Uh, he's doing an excellent job. He's running the running the, the scene tournaments this week. Um, and I'm looking over here. I got a chat board. I see that Jonathan Abshire came on with us, and of course Derek was with us watching. Danny Gann, of course, we were calling him out. You know, if you don't know who Danny Gann is, the dude is a killer slayer with a frog down in Florida. He's catching 20, 22, 23 inch fish every other day um, down there. Uh, we had uh, Wes Fugit from North Carolina jumped on. Big John Gillespie, my, my fishing partner. I see Cyrus Dooley came on. So uh, those are just a few of the, the late here in the chat. I appreciate you guys jumping on with us and watching the show. Um, it means a lot. And, you know, I, I don't know how often we'll be able to get this up and running. But my plan is to try to do this at least once a week or once every 10 days. And so because there's a lot of tournaments going on out there and people are fishing so we can get information on how they're doing, what they're catching fish with, what line they're using, the type of fishing poles that they use, if it's a medium light, heavy, things like that. Um, then we've got uh, you know, these featured guests, you know, I, I want to get uh, Jody Queen on here and get some of his experience. Chris Payne, Chris Payne's been on, I've uh, been around for years I mean, you, you, you go look at his profile. Uh, back in 2014, he was writing for KBF Magazine. And the old guard of kayak bass fishing will remember Chris at the first and the first events helping out, uh, wearing the old Hook One stuff. And uh, you know, Chris is a Texas guy, so love him to death. Look forward to seeing you, Chris, down at ICAST if you're on. Um, uh, Harold Harper, thanks, man. And I... Appreciate you taking the time to jump on and, and saying hi. Uh, and good luck with your brother this weekend. Look forward to seeing you down there Saturday, maybe uh, uh, consuming a cold, cold beverage. Uh, anyway, much love to all of you. God bless you. We are going to sign off here. And uh, appreciate you again.